I first became aware of you because I, I didn't really read the business section when I was, you know, 15 years ago. But when, when you first started running for, for Senate in California. So what year was that? 2000? 2010. 2010. Okay. So you're running for Senate in California. What prompted you to take on a quixotic task like running for Senate in California? Well, as I told you, <laughs> I, I don't mind tough challenges. I've been attracted to tough challenges all my life. So that was a tough challenge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a tough challenge and a very long shot. But honestly, I felt as though there was nothing in the conversation in the political conversation about the people that I saw in California who didn't think the way Barbara Boxer did, who were being harmed by the policies that Barbara Boxer and Dianne Feinstein and the Democrats in Sacramento were pushing. And I felt as though it was important to have somebody with um, some small shot to be able to stand up and articulate what I thought were uh, real life, realistic policies that actually work, that I know something about. See, one of the reasons I think we were intended to be a citizen government is politicians don't know a lot about a lot of things, especially if they've been in politics all their life. I'm not saying they're bad people. There's some very good people in politics. But if all you've done is run and win, run and win, run and win, you don't know a lot about what's going on, and yet you're making policies that impact people tremendously. And so California's business environment was getting harmed, crushed by these policies. I happened to know something about it, and Barbara Boxer knew nothing about it, and that kind of ticked me off. Well, it turns out Barbara Boxer knew very little about anything, but well, neither did the voters of California. Be, but, she yeah. wouldn't be the only politician that way. But I think so much of politics just gets to be, it's like sports. It's win-lose. Win, my team. My team. And we've turned into tribal team players. I'm on the D team, so I always go with the D. I'm on the R team. I always go with the R. That win-lose never solves problems, although it may win elections. So after that taste of running in, in 2010, what prompted you to think, okay, 2016, I really want more of this? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such a doubting question, Ben. I'm sure. Well, I mean, yes, I, it was I, a huge I deal, challenge. I talk, I talk to tons of politicians, yes. and I always look at them and I say, like, this seems horrible. Why would you want to do this? Well, you know, there are things about it that are very hard, uh, but the voters make it great. I mean, I have no regrets. I loved talking to citizens. And one of the things that I said, uh, the media once asked me, what was the biggest surprise about running for president? And I said, the yawning chasm between what citizens talk about and how they talk about it and what the media asks and how the media talks about it. There is a yawning chasm still, which is why it's so important that you do what you do, for example. So why did I do that? I did it because once again, I knew it was a long shot. I knew it was a tough challenge, but ours was intended to be a citizen government. And I know something about big bureaucracies and I know what makes them tick and I know what has to happen to reform them. And Washington is one gigantic bureaucracy and it is a system that seeks to preserve itself at all costs. Republicans and Democrats alike. I know something about that. I know how to reform those systems. And so I thought, well, I think my voice can make a contribution here. 